Hi, I did a quick video on continuously compounding interest, growth, and decay. A lot, lots of stuff going on there. So let's look at our um, continuously compounding interest formula first. So before, in other videos, we've talked about how interest can grow annually, uh, biannually, quarterly, monthly, semi-annually, and so forth. So lots of ways interest can grow out there. Uh, sometimes it just grows continuously. So which is the best investment for you? Well, you want to make that at market analysis uh, at some point when you go to invest in the future. So let's look and see what happens when you uh, invest and you compound something continuously. We're going to use this value E here because that is a, a known form of a number that if we continuously compound something, then it makes the most sense. Now, if you want to study a little bit more on E, I encourage you to do that. Um, for your own knowledge about where E came from and why we use it in such a format. So then, uh, okay, so we've got A of T, so some amount uh, after some time, some final amount, is equal to P, E, and then as an exponent, R to and T, R times T. So what do each of these mean? A of T is the final amount given T, or you know, after so much time, I'm gonna have so much invested or so much money as a result. P is the principal or the initial or original amount. Okay, E is just E, it's 2.718 something. You can look that up, usually, usually use your calculator and put it in as E to the X, okay? Then R is the rate in decimal form. Again, when we do anything with interest, we want the, work, the interest rate to always be in decimal form. And T is time typically in years, but you might see problems where they might change it or alter it to do so. All right, now what if we have growth or decay? Now all of a sudden they change from a P to a C. Same basic thing. Now, in this case, however, when we're talking about growth or decay, now we have to come to this R value, this rate. And if R is greater than zero, then we say it's a growth. All right, because something is being exponentially uh, growing because it is keeps raising and keeps uh, growing without bound. Now if R is less than zero, now what happens is if you put a negative number up here, what happens to E? It goes to the denominator, right? So we get one over E to the RT. So that's what happens with a negative exponent. Go back to your uh, negative exponential rules and, and see, what, see what that does to it. But it becomes a fraction, meaning if I take some amount, and I multiply it by 2x, it keeps growing. If I multiply it by 1 half, keep having it and having it and having it, it, gets, it, dec it decreases in value and so it decays. All right, let's look at an example problem. Here, example number one. If Jennifer deposits $9,000 uh, into 3D Bank, right, in November, so she did it a while ago, 10 years ago. She deposited some money. She put that in there. And uh, maybe she went off to school and got a degree and something. So she's, now she's ready to cash that money in. She wants, her, she wants her money. If the bank pays an interest rate of 7% compounded continuously, how much will she have in November this year? So 10 years later, right? How much is she going to have? So look, we have A of 10 is equal to principal amount, 9,000 E to the... 7% is what in decimal form? 0 0.07, that's right. Uh, and then times 10. So we get 10 there, so A of 10, so P is 9,000, list what you have here, P is 9,000, R is 0 0.07 or 7%, but again, in decimal form, T is 10. So now, A of 10, once I put this in my calculator, I get 18,000, $123.77, yes. She's picked up, you know, a, quite a bit of money over the last 10 years. She's done well for herself. Nice job. Okay, example number two. Here we go. Let's say a radioactive substance has a rate of change of negative 3.1% continuously. So it's always decreasing. Sorry, I just gave it away. Uh, rewind that part and don't listen to that part, okay? If its initial mass is seven grams, what will the mass be in five years? 
Question A, is this a growth or decay model? Well, I kind of gave it away, but go ahead and... Okay, I'm back. Uh, think about that for a second. But yes, you were right. It is a decay. Decay. And more importantly, why is it a decay? So go back, rewind a little bit, go back to what we said. What makes it a decay value, a decay type graph or curve? All right, now B, solve for the mass. Well, again, our principal amount is 7. We have E, and we have a negative 3.1%, so we put 0 0.031 in decimal form. And we want to know what it was in five years. What will that mass be in five years? So if we, we put that in the calculator, so A of 5 is equal to 5.99 grams, which is good because we should see a decreased amount. So the context of the question noted that something was happening at a negative 3.1%, uh, so we should have seen a decrease. Again, look at your values at the end. If you see that your value is growing and it should be decreasing, well, then something went awry. So, all right. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks a lot. Have a great night. <laughs> Peace and love.